Sometimes things just don't go to plan. You do everything you can, and in the end, it just doesn't work out. In season one of Trash to Thrash, there were two guitars that gave me some trouble. Today, we're going to find out whatever happened to the PV Rockmaster and the Crackle Kelly and finally get them finished up. Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified whenever a new episode comes out. This is Trash to Thrash. For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. This season, I'll be rebuilding guitars sent in by fans of the show. I'll be rebuilding 14 guitars over 14 weeks, each with a unique and interesting backstory. I'll be refinishing, refretting, rewiring, whatever it takes to make these things into the guitars of their dreams. This is Trash to Thrash. Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Trash to Thrash. I'm your host, Mark Murray, and today I'm going to be working on two guitars that you saw me start in Season 1, but you never saw the conclusion of. Today I'm going to be showing you the conclusion of the PV Rockmaster and the Crackle Kelly. Both of these guitars had problems while I was painting them, but they've both been completed by now and it's time to reveal them. Alright, let's go back all the way to the beginning with the Jackson Kelly. This is a 1996 Jackson Kelly KE3 that was made in Japan. It's got a beautiful flame maple top on it, but it has a ton of deep chips and deep scratches. I love maple tops, but this one is just a very thin veneer, meaning it's a real thin layer of maple slapped on top of a poplar body. This veneer is so thin that if I try to sand it down and get through the red to the natural wood color, I'd sand right through the veneer. So with that being said, we'll be sanding it down and giving it a brand new finish. This thing is pretty beat up, but by the end of it, it's gonna be a killer shred machine. When done right, these Japanese Jacksons from the 90s were amazing guitars. This thing is going to be a ton of fun to do and it's going to get a crazy transformation. Step one is to hand this off to my assistant Ryan who begins disassembling the guitar and then sanding it down. First thing for me is to cut up some 3 8 inch dowels. And I'll glue that piece of the dowel in here. This hole is not straight and it's completely off center so I'm filling that in and we'll be re-drilling a new hole. Like I said, this guitar came with a ton of damage, so now I'll do some Bondo to fill all the chips and dings, sand it all level, and then I brought it into the spray booth so I could lay down a coat of white paint on it. The reason I'm spraying it white is so that I can get a nice uniform base coat on this guitar. When a guitar has this much damage on it, I like to repair all of it and then give it a nice solid base coat. Then I can really see what's even and what's going to need a little bit more work. I always like to do this with a high contrast color. Since this guitar was dark red, we went with white. Had this guitar been white, I would have used black. Because then when you come back and sand the guitar, you can easily see where the high and the low spots are. As you sand through, you'll know that that's a high spot, and the spots that stay the new contrasted color will be the low spots. There was a couple little things here or there, but for the most part, it looked good. So, after letting the white dry and cure for a few days, I came back and sprayed on the first colors. With this guitar, what I'm looking for is the cracked lava look. Since we'll be doing black crackle over this, I want to lay down some orange and red and let them flow back and forth so that when the black crackle goes on, it's going to look like cracked lava. Crackle paint is really fun to work with because it just transforms right in front of your eyes. You have to work quickly with it, and if you start going over the same area too many times, it kind of ruins it. So you got to work in one area and just work straight through the guitar. And like magic, right in front of your eyes, it transforms. Don't ask me how it does this, it's some type of chemical reaction. And it's really nothing new, it's a technology that's been around for decades, even women put this on their nails. Obviously this was huge on guitars in the 80s, and I'm not quite sure why it went away in the 90s and early 2000s. But in 2021, Crackle is alive and stronger than ever. All my favorite big brands like ESP, Jackson, and Kiesel are doing Crackle paint jobs and they all look awesome. Okay, so this paint job turned out pretty good, but there was actually a problem at this point here that I did not address. Most of this guitar turned out great. I actually love the pattern. The orange to red burst turned out pretty good. But if you look to the left of the hole where the volume knob's gonna be, you could see this weird crinkled texture. I thought if I threw enough clear coat over this, I'd be able to flatten out and sand above that. But I found out the hard way that was not the case. I'm not exactly sure what caused this. I'm guessing it was a contaminant. Either the paint wasn't mixed right, or maybe there was an oil on top of the guitar finish. If you have experience with painting and you know what causes that crinkling, let me know down in the comments. But this is the guitar here after I sprayed the clear coat. You can see it's got a real thick, nice clear coat on it, but that crinkling was still present. 
over the last 20 plus years of working on guitars and cars and all kinds of other stuff, it's not just how good are you at building and putting things together. It's also how good are you at fixing your mistakes and making them look like they never happened. That's a true sign of somebody who has a lot of experience. So my attempt to fix this was to sand it level at this point. But the problem was that the crinkling was below the paint. You can see as I sanded down the crinkled area, it sanded straight through the color and showed the white paint from below. I saw no evidence of this problem before I did the crackle paint, so this leads me to believe that the crackle and the paint before reacted to each other in a strange way and caused this. My next attempt to rescue this guitar was to do a little bit of touch up on that area. Well, as cool as this finish looked, it didn't come out right, so we have to start over by sanding it back down. It totally sucks to have to do this, but on a multicolored finish like this, there's no way I'm gonna be able to touch up just a small area. Had this guitar been one solid color, then that may be possible. But let me tell you, this finish was not easy to get off. This finish is quite a bit thicker now with the new clear coat, the crackle, and the orange and red that I sprayed on. Plus, this clear coat that I had used was a polyester clear coat, which is incredibly durable and hard. So to sand back through all this, I had to use 80 grit sandpaper, then 320, and then I finished it off with some 600. When I painted the body, I also painted the headstock to match. When rebuilding a custom guitar, there's nothing like a matched headstock with a new custom logo. On goes the crackle paint. And again, like magic, it does its thing. After long enough, it looks like this. Turned out super awesome, so I won't need to repaint this like I will with the body. What do you think, did I achieve the cracked lava look that I was going for? I love the burst on this headstock, back and forth, the orange and red. Nailed it in my opinion. So I'll take the small victory of the headstock working out even though the body didn't. I mean, the main thing is with the body, I'm gonna redo it, it's gonna come out perfect, and it'll just be part of the story of the guitar. It's a great lesson learned that if there's a mistake going on, stop and fix it rather than just keep going with the clear coat and expecting to just magically be able to fix it later. And now the Jackson logo goes on the headstock. I considered doing a red logo or an orange logo or something custom, but I think that the white cuts through so good and it looks like something that would come from the Jackson Custom Shop. Here it is with the clear coat over it. Extra glossy and that's gonna sand super flat so you'll never feel the vinyl headstock logo under the clear coat. After level sanding and polishing it, I once again handed the guitar back to Ryan and he installed the new Goto tuners. You may notice in the background his newly acquired Ibanez RG8 eight string guitar. His Les Paul Studio that I showed you guys two weeks ago sold and he bought this Ibanez RG8 off me. I don't play much 8-string guitar, but I feel like it's a great tool to have on hand for songwriting, like having a bunch of acoustic guitars around, a 12-string, a nylon string, a steel string, all kinds of miscellaneous electrics. Each one of these offers a completely different sound and feel, and with the music I write, I like to have a lot of different sounds in it. I think of it kind of like a painter having a palette with many different colors. There's times they may only want to use a couple colors, but there's also times when you'd want to use the whole array of colors. All right, now we're back with the body in the spray booth for round two. I'm just starting it out on the first coat to give it some nice coverage with some standard orange. I didn't love the burst pattern on the first paint job, so I really don't mind that I have to repaint this guitar. I felt it could have came out better. You could see the way I went back and forth with the orange and the red here. For that flowing lava look, I think this is gonna achieve it much better. And on goes the crackle. For the clear coat, this time I used Spray Max High gloss 2K in an aerosol can. One thing I really like about this clear coat is you don't have to mix it up like a standard two part. It mixes in the can. There's actually a button on the bottom. You press the button, it releases the two chemicals into the same compartment, and then they mix together when you shake it. The can is good to use for about two days, and it gives you a real professional 2K clear coat. I love that I don't have to clean my gun in between and remix clear coats. It's so much faster and more convenient to use than an HVLP gun. That being said, I think you could probably get a thicker clear coat though, using an HVLP gun. I mean, regardless of this being a true 2K, there's still some kind of chemicals in there thinning it out a little more than a standard 2K that would be mixed on the spot. Regardless, I love the way this thing is looking. The pattern turned out really good. Check out the Guitar Guts logo on the back. I think that the way that the red and the orange interacted with this burst is a lot cooler than with the first guitar. This one really does have much more of a flowing lava look. What do you think? You like this one better or the first one? Let me know down in the comments. Next, I sanded and polished up the guitar and then brought it over for assembly. Now with this guitar, I've gone back and forth and changed my mind a few times on exactly how I want to set up the electronics. I know this guitar is going to have a set of EMG 81 and 60 pickups 
but I'm not exactly sure how I want the volume, tone, kill switch, pickup selector switch, all that stuff to be laid out yet. My original idea was to have a volume pot in the first position that also can be pulled up and down to activate a pickup selector. So in the down position it would be the bridge pickup and in the up position it would be the neck pickup. I got this idea from George Lynch who uses this on his signature models that have two humbucker pickups and only one volume control. It's a super clean look for the guitar because it only has one knob and no pickup selector switch but you still have two pickups which is really cool. The only drawback to this is that you can't blend the two pickups and play them at the same time. Although I really do like the idea of the push pull as a pickup selector, I also really love having the option of playing both pickups at the same time. Ultimately I decided to go with the volume in position one add a hole into the middle where I'm going to put the kill switch, and then the selector switch on position three. So over to the drill press we go, and a kill switch hole is born. Then I went over to my box of kill switches. You guys know how much I love kill switches. Of course I have a gigantic box of kill switches on hand. Tons of Iron Age and Tessie kill switches, all different colors and styles. And I found the perfect one for this guitar, a black Iron Age kill switch with a red LED. Next, I brought over the shielding and dropped in some copper shielding along the inside of the control cavity. After a little bit of modification here and there and opening up the holes a little bit bigger, I mounted the pickup selector switch, the kill switch, and the volume pot. Next, I ran the wires for the EMG pickups and mounted the pickups, EMG 60 in the neck and an 81 in the bridge, classic Metallica style. Then I mounted the new Goto Tremolo Claw followed by a new stereo output jack with a metal square housing. EMG makes it so easy to install a set of pickups. It's a completely solderless design and it all just plugs together. They provide diagrams and they make it so easy to do. It's actually a great first mod for somebody to try out. And while we're on the topic of EMG, I'll let you know that this episode of Trash to Thrash is sponsored by EMG. I'm a huge fan of EMG. You guys have seen me use them in a ton of my guitar builds, a ton of my personal guitars, and they're actually the first mod I ever actually did do a guitar. Back when I was 13 years old, I bought a set of EMG pickups, and it was before they had the solderless design. I wired them in with my dad, and I couldn't be happier with them. EMG and I are teaming up to do a giveaway. Be sure to watch the next few episodes of Trash to Thrash to get some details on how you can win a set of EMG pickups. This contest is going to be time sensitive, so make sure you turn on the bell to be notified when the new episode drops, so you'll be able to be one of the first to see it, and be sure to be entered into the contest. Like I said before, EMG uses a solderless plug and play setup. So you just plug everything together, it's real simple. All the wires basically just wired to a central control bus. But if you notice how small the control cavity on this guitar is, I'm not going to have space for that bus. So I'm just going to have to wire everything direct old school, meaning it's going to take a lot longer. Next, I got the brand new awesome Goto 1996 floating tremolo installed. So far, the Crackle Kelly is coming out awesome. I got the Goto bridge mounted, the Iron Age kill switch, and the EMGs all hooked up. And while setting this guitar up, I had a special delivery. A guitar arrived. So we'll open it up and see what it is. It's this Wolfgang I bought off Reverb a couple days ago. This seems like an older Wolfgang because it has a black Floyd Rose on it, a light maple neck, and most of the newer ones you get these days have black chrome and a roasted maple neck. And this one looks like it's in good condition. It also came with a black D-Tuna and a gig bag. Has the trim bar, the covers are all on the back, so it's complete and uh, yeah, I'll be modding this thing up. So if anybody's looking for a custom Wolfgang, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com, and I'll put whatever paint job on this bad boy that you want. I took a break for a few minutes and went and checked up on Ryan out front, who's making a cavity control cover for the rear of the guitar. Here he's actually making one out of clear material that we'll use as a template for future builds for next time we build a Kelly. Now going back into the shop, the neck is mounted, I got the strings on it, and it's intonated and tuned up but you know I'm gonna make you wait until the end of the episode for the full reveal. Hey guys, how would you like to win one of the guitars that I built on this show? Every month I'm giving away one of the guitars that I built on this show through my Patreon. So go sign up to the CEO tier of my Patreon page. It's $10 a month to join the CEO tier, but you're automatically entered every month in a raffle to win one of the crazy custom guitars I built on this show. I've given away the 94 Concept Rhodes that I did, the Ibanez Proline V, and the next guitar that I'm going to be giving away, August 15th, I'll be doing the raffle. 
is going to be for the Crackle Kelly that you guys are seeing in this episode. It's got a Goto bridge, EMG 8160 pickups, an Iron Age kill switch with an LED, tow tuners. It's fully decked out and it can be yours if you go sign up to my CEO tier on my Patreon page. Like I said, it's $10 a month. Every month I give away a crazy guitar like that. Next month I'm going to be giving away the Roswell. So that's going to be the September giveaway. Make sure you're signed up to that thing and I got way more crazy guitars coming after that. As always, there's a no purchase necessary way to enter the contest, so watch Trash to Thrash next week to find out exactly how to enter with no purchase necessary, without having to sign up to the Patreon. But why wouldn't you just sign up to the Patreon? It's just 10 bucks a month. So if you want to win the Crackle Kelly or any of the other crazy guitars that I built, check out the link in the description to my Patreon page and go sign up. Now let's get into the PV Rockmaster. Next we'll be working on the PV Rockmaster. This guitar has an interesting look, kind of retro-y, one humbucker design, pretty cool guitar. As a kid, I was a huge PV fan because of Eddie Van Halen. He played PV Wolfgangs and PV 5150s, but I'd never seen a Rockmaster before. This guitar was sent in by Kelvin, who I built a Frankenstrap for about a year ago. He sent in this guitar on behalf of his friend Haro, who is a huge fan of the show. He told me they watched the show together, and in one of the first few episodes of Trash to Thrash, I referred to it as the Murray Touch when I buy a guitar and change all the hardware to gold, like the Midas Touch. When Kelvin reached out to me about this guitar, he actually told me that he wants me to give this guitar the Murray Touch. So that's what we're doing. The plan for this guitar will be to refinish it with a blend of blues and purples. Then we'll be outfitting it fully with gold hardware, a Goto bridge and tuners, an EMG 57, a Q parts inlaid knob, and an Iron Age kill switch. Of course, Ryan disassembled this guitar for me and then sanded it down. Then I filled in some of the screw holes with filler and sanded those level. And then the fun part began. I brought it into the spray booth and started laying down some color. To me, one of the most fun parts of working on guitars is painting them. Coming up with new color designs and techniques. It's fun to just experiment with things. And that's what this finish is. Some customers know exactly what they want and some customers want to brainstorm with you. This is one where we brainstormed together and we came up with a really cool concept. The original idea was to use some blues and purples, kind of blend it over the whole body, and then throw some black splatter over it. But once I got in the paint booth and I started putting the dark blue and the light blue and the light purple and the dark purple back and forth, what came out was really cool, and I didn't think it needed the black splatter. I showed Kelvin the guitar in this form, and he agreed. We both thought it was really cool. With gold hardware, this thing is going to be insane. Next up, I used my vinyl cutter to cut up a PV logo for the headstock. With the space style of this guitar, I thought that silver would look really cool. So I made one out of silver. After applying the logo, looks really cool. And after plenty of clear coat, that looks great. And after spraying the clear coat on the body, same with that, it looks awesome. For the pick guard on this guitar, we're going to use some clear acrylic. This pickguard is going to be on the top of the guitar, and instead of making it so large like the original one is, we filled in some of the holes on the body, and we're going to make a smaller, more cool, modern pickguard. I used a bandsaw to cut out the basic shape of the pickguard, and here you can see how much smaller it is than the original. Then I went back to the drill press, drilled out a couple holes for a kill switch and a volume knob, and it's looking smooth. Now I went over, brought it back over, and set it on the guitar, and traced on the mounting holes. Since it's a clear pickguard, it's real easy to just lay it on there and trace the holes right off the body. Back to the drill press to drill those out, and I use this countersink drill bit to make sure that the screws of the pickguard are going to sit flush. With some of my full custom builds, my customers request a custom case to match. These are the outside shells, I make them out of wood and then paint them to match the guitar. They're actually super time consuming to make, but when you order a fully custom guitar and you get this case that matches it, I think it's just such a cool feature. I even add little special touches, like painting the hinges of the case to match the hardware of the guitar. Building a nice case requires a lot of measuring, and it helps when you do this a lot to have some templates for pre-drilling all your holes. There's a lot of weird random details that you don't think of until you go to build the case. One of them being the nylon strap that holds the lid from opening too far. I cut the strap to length about 8 or 9 inches, and then I heat up a drill bit like shown. 
The drill bit cuts through the nylon strap like butter. If I was mass producing these cases for the same guitar over and over, I would have measurements for each model. But since these are all custom cases, everything needs to be measured each time. And custom pieces of foam must be cut for each case. After the support for the body has been inserted, I start to create the neck support. You want to support the neck and the body of the guitar, and not the headstock. The headstock can snap off, it's pretty vulnerable. When I can, I'll use the bandsaw to cut long cuts of the foam, so they're perfectly straight and easy. And the body fits in there perfectly. I use black velvet to wrap all the foam pieces for the inside of the case. To adhere the velvet to the foam, I use spray-on Gorilla Glue adhesive. I use spray-on Gorilla Glue adhesive for upholstery and fabric. This case is getting close. It's not quite done, but the hardware matches the bridge of the guitar, the rubber feet are mounted, the corner protectors are on. Most of the inside's done, but this one piece still needs to be wrapped with velvet, but it's almost there. After level sanding and polishing the headstock, that's looking sharp. Everything was going so good until I was level sanding it and I burned through the clear coat in a couple spots. With a crazy burst finish like this, I tried a couple times to do some touch up and match it, but it never matched right. And obviously, you know, it's impossible to match something that's such a crazy burst when I was going back and forth with all these colors. So unfortunately, just like the Crackle Kelly, had to start over by sanding it down. And I should say, I don't do this lightly. I really wish I didn't have to redo this guitar. I put so much time to get it to where it was at. And I was really loving the results I got on that guitar. But I'm not going to sit there and beat myself up over making some mistakes like that. I learned some lessons. Be more cautious about sanding towards the edges. Put thicker clear coat on the edges of the guitar. But in the end, what really matters is getting it right. And I'll definitely get this thing right. If you're working on a project and it's not going well, don't be afraid to start back over with it. You're going to be happier if you start back over with it than if you left it in a state that you're unhappy with. Don't be demotivated by making mistakes. Everybody who does successful things makes many mistakes along the way. Just make sure you learn from your mistakes so you're not repeating the same ones over and over again. So as you can see, I repainted this guitar using the same colors, light and dark purple and light and dark blue. Again, I'm using Spraymax 2K Clear Glamour. So now the guitar is resprayed re-cleared, carefully sanded and polished, and it's looking good. Now it's time to put it all together. Here's some of the hardware I'll be using on this guitar. This Goto Hardtail Bridge. I love that the saddles are satin, the base plate is gloss, and the screws and the springs are silver. This is the Q-Parts inlaid knob we'll be using, the same one I used on my Jackson back on episode one and two. Of course, my favorite gold Goto tuners, made in Japan, and we'll be using these rolling string retainers for the headstock. For the electronics, we're going to be using a gold Iron Age kill switch with a blue LED and an EMG 57 pickup. Before I mounted the bridge, I mounted the neck, double checked the scale length, and then mounted the new hardtail bridge. Next, I started on the electronics. First, I shielded the cavity, and then I ran the pickup cable and mounted the pickup. Then I real carefully took my time and wired this bad boy up. With the clear pick guard on top, I need the wiring to look real nice and clean. And since this is an active pickup and the kill switch has an LED, both of those components are going to require a 9 volt battery. So I custom painted a 9 volt battery to match the body and I'll be using that inside the guitar. This episode of Trash to Thrash is sponsored by Iron Age Accessories. You guys know I love Iron Age accessories. I use their kill switches in most of my guitars and in both of the guitars in this episode. So go get yourself a kill switch. Check out their link. It's down in the description below and use the code GG-10 at checkout and get 10% off your kill switch order. Two weeks ago on this show, I said that there was going to be a giveaway for some kill switches and some limited edition Guitar Guts picks. Well, the three winners have been picked and their comments are here on the screen. So thanks to everybody for leaving your comments and asking about that. I have another Iron Age giveaway plan for the second half of season two of Trash to Thrash. So be sure to be watching every episode 
Be sure to have your notifications turned on because these giveaways are time sensitive. Some of them are going to be first person to do this, first five people to do this, so it's going to be first people to see the video are going to be the winners. So we got another Iron Age giveaway, an EMG giveaway, a Lundgren pickup giveaway, and a SoCal pedal board giveaway coming up in the second half of season two of Trash to Thrash, so make sure to keep watching. Now, are you guys ready to see the finished version of these guitars? Let's start with the Crackle Kelly. All right, here it is. The Burnt Lava Crackle Kelly. I love it. I might have to keep this one. The way the orange and the reds blended together under the crackle look great. The EMG 60 in the neck, the 81 in the bridge. That brand new Goto bridge made in Japan. The Iron Age kill switch with the red LED. 24 fret neck with shark fin inlays. And the matched headstock. Goto tuners up at the head. This thing is just a total beast. I don't personally own any Crackle guitars yet, and I'm trying to figure out what I want to add to my collection, but man, this thing is, it's really tempting me. I'm glad the paint job didn't work out the first time because the way the red and the orange flow back and forth on this, it just glows. It totally came out how I was hoping. What do you guys think of this monster? Let me know in the comments what you think about the Crackle pattern and the colors, the way they flow back and forth. This guitar is hot, but you want to see something really cool? Let's check out that blue and purple PV Rockmaster now. Oh my, this thing looks insane. It was getting a little too hot in here looking at that Jackson Kelly and this thing just brought the temperature down. Man, I love the way this thing turned out. Look at the clear pickguard and look through it. You could see a custom painted battery that matches the body. That EMG 57 looks ridiculously good all the gold hardware does. And look at that Goto bridge right there. Brand new Goto hardtail bridge matching the pickup. This finish is ridiculous, I love it. It feels subtle, yet in bright light, it's out of this world. This color combination's a new favorite of mine. I've always loved gold hardware, but with this type of blue, I think we came up with one of the standard Murray guitar colors. Yeah, I seriously love this thing. I love the pick guard. I love the Q parts knob, I love the Iron Age kill switch, the EMG pickup, the Goto bridge, the Goto tuners, the custom painted battery, the whole thing. I mean, going from what it was to this, it's almost unbelievable that this is the same guitar. If you remember, this is what it looked like going in. Wasn't a bad looking guitar by any means. But then seeing it like this is just ridiculous. Like I said about the Kelly, I think I want to keep it, but this is a customer guitar, so I can't keep this one. I got to send this one out. And like I said, I'm definitely giving away the Crackle Kelly in the next giveaway for Patreon, so there's no chances of me keeping either of these ones. I finally have a manageable collection. Now, we got to plug these things in and see how they sound. This is one of my original songs you can find over on my Spotify page called Murder One. It's a single off my upcoming album, Leader of the Band, coming soon. Link down in the description to my Spotify page. Hey, thanks so much for watching everybody. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this episode, what you thought about the Crackle Kelly, the PV Rockmaster. I love the finish on the Rockmaster. That with gold hardware, I think it's gotta be a standard when I start making original guitar guts slash Murray guitars. Um, leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about the guitars. Hit the like button, that stuff really helps support the show. It boosts us up in YouTube's algorithm, so I really appreciate that. Also, check out GuitarGuts.com if you want to pick up a Guitar Guts Kill Boost pedal. Got a couple left in stock, or a Guitar Guts Kill Switch. I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to the sponsors of this episode, EMG and Iron Age Guitar Accessories. Links to their websites are down in the description below. And as you guys know, I'm buying and selling gear all the time. 
Like I mentioned earlier in the episode, Ryan's Les Paul, it sold. Ryan bought my RG8, which is an Ibanez 8-string, so I don't have an 8-string anymore. But I'm working on a trade deal with one of you guys, one of my viewers of Trash to Thrash, um, where I'm going to be trading some labor, rebuilding one of his guitars in an exchange for a couple of his old guitars that he doesn't want anymore. One of them's an 8-string, so soon I'll have an 8-string back in my possession, but I wanted to bring this up to you guys. I know a lot of you ask me for custom builds, and I write a lot of you guys' quotes. Um, if you're looking for a custom guitar or want me to build you a custom one or modify one of your guitars that you want to send in and have on the show here, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. You could have ideas already, or if you don't have any ideas, I can help you come up, you know, brainstorm with me, and we'll come up with some ideas together to come up with a really cool custom guitar for you. I also offer payment plans, so while I'm building the guitar, sometimes it takes three months to build these things. You can pay it off over that three months, or if you have some old gear that you think I might be interested in, shoot me an email, send it my way, let me know uh, what you got, send me some pictures of the guitar, and what you want done to your guitar or what kind of guitar you're looking for. I am always looking for some interesting trades and looking for cool new guitars to bring in to work on, so email me. All my information is also down in the description below. As many of you guys saw, I just got a Wolfgang in, so if anybody's looking for a custom Wolfgang, hit me up. I'm just finishing up another Frankenstrat, a Stealth Frankenstrat, and I just started a Stealth Wolfgang. So if any of those are interesting to you, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. Thank you guys so much for watching the episode. I really appreciate it. Next week, we got another insane custom guitar coming up. I got uh, two words for you. I'm going to give you a little hint. Alien Blood. So be sure to tune back in next week. Remember, you can always find the show at guitarguts.tv. And do me a favor. Help me out. Help support the show in the, one of the biggest way possible. Uh, tell your friends about the show. Take a screenshot of it. Show your friends on Instagram, on your story, or whatever. You know, t uh, Tag your friends in these posts. I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next week on Trash to Thrash. Rock on, my friends.